Boeing is one of the world's largest aerospace companies, celebrated for its airplanes, helicopters, rockets, satellites, and more. Boeing is also known for its diverse and highly skilled workforce, with more than 140,000 employees in over 65 countries worldwide. But did you know that Boeing is at the forefront of aviation manufacturing, using mechatronics, robotics, and ergonomics to help employees build its fleet? Hey everyone, I'm Nikita, coming to you from Renton in Washington State. I'm Olivia, coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And I'm Chris, coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. Today, we're taking a special tour of three Boeing manufacturing centers. We'll meet some of the lucky people who get to build these incredible Boeing products. Along the way, we'll learn what mechatronics, robotics, and ergonomics are, and why they're so important to the future of aviation manufacturing. Welcome to this Discovery Education and Boeing Future U virtual field trip. I'm an 11th grader here in Renton, and I'm super passionate about STEM, especially as it pertains to space exploration. I participate in several clubs and after-school programs with a focus on engineering and computer science. And one day, I hope to pursue a career in astrophysics. Today, I'm touring the production line at Boeing's 737 factory in Renton, Washington, considered to be one of the most efficient airplane factories in the world. Covering more than a million square feet of space, Boeing has built more than 11,000 737s since the program began in 1967. The thing I'm most excited to see are the mechatronics platforms that Boeing uses to help employees make these 737s. The term mechatronics was coined in the 1960s and is a combination of the words mechanical and electronics. Today, mechatronics can also include artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, robotics, telecommunications, optical engineering, systems and controls, and more. So, what does mechatronics look like on a real production line? Let's go find out! Hi, Will! Hi, Nikita! Wow, it's so loud in here! What's making all the sound? That's right, we're in an active factory building 737, so you're here in a combination of mechanics and automated machines working on wing panels. So Will, what do you do here at Boeing? So I'm an equipment engineer. That means I'm responsible for bringing machines like this into the building and then supporting them and maintaining them throughout their life cycle. So what am I looking at here? So we are standing in the panel assembly line, or PAL. It's where we use automated fastening machines to build our wing panels that are used on the 737 airplanes. Well, what's a panel? A wing panel is made up of stringers and skins that get fastened together to form the aerodynamic surfaces of a wing. So you've got a lower panel, an upper panel that get put together, and you need a left and a right to fly the airplane. What is the machine actually doing here? So the machine is primarily responsible for the automated installation of about 5,000 fasteners per panel. It also does some trimming if the panel needs to be trimmed to fit within the correct size and shape so that it matches up downstream. Why do you use automation to build these panels? Why not let a human do it? Great question. There's really three reasons. One is safety, and then quality, and then the efficiency. So you can imagine if you're having to do this by hand, you know, go locate where the hole goes, drill the hole, install the fastener, 5,000 times per panel, it's a lot, right? From an ergonomic standpoint, much easier and beneficial for the person to use a machine to do that. The machine is also better at doing that. We can control them much better and we can collect data off the machines, ensuring that they're doing that properly. And then the last one is machines are just far faster. So I noticed these people standing behind computer screens. Are they the operators? That's right, they are the operators. The operators are responsible for setting up the machine, making sure that they are working properly before the machines execute the numerical control program. That's what tells the machine where to drive to and what fastener to install. So how long does it take to actually build this panel? So we have two automated fastening positions in series and it takes about 12 hours in each position. So we get about one panel through the automated positions every day. Well, what advice would you have for students who might someday work for Boeing? 
I would say the biggest piece of advice I can give you is be willing to work hard and jump in and solve problems. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be you know, the best student with the best grades, but uh, as long as you can push forward and always find a solution, you'll do well in your career. So what am I going to see next on the tour? So next you're going to go to the spar assembly line or SAL and see where the spars are made that are then put together with the panels to build a wing in the horizontal build line. Hi, Nikia. So, what do you do here at Boeing? I am a SAL operator, which stands for SPAR Assembly Line. And my job is to make sure that we have the SPARs put up. What exactly is a SPAR? Oh, a SPAR is a long piece of aluminum and it's milled to the spec that we need. We have a front and a rear SPAR. The SPAR is the strength and the flexibility of the wing. We make the spar so there are ribs that go to the spar. It actually holds the flexibility and the strength of the wing and it has a place where all the actuators and all the wiring and everything of that nature to hook up. What am I looking at here? Right now you're looking at the spar being made. The machines are actually having the fasteners, checking chamfers, checking a lot of things. Every hole, every fastener is a cycle. So we run through plenty of cycles before we get to one end, to the last end. So and this is just the beginning right now. We're putting the basic fasteners in, and then we go to the next stage. So how is mechatronics used in this process? Well, the mechatronics actually works with our tool changes. Our tool changes are made for a quicker tool change. Some of the old machines we used to have, it would take probably 15, 20 minutes to do a tool change. This one here, it'll take probably 20 seconds. They'll, whatever the program calls for, they'll use the calling of the fasteners and the drills, and it'll bring everything down, put everything together, make sure everything is where it's supposed to be, drill the hole, put the bolt in, put the collar in, and then move on. How long does this process take? From the time that we're doing here in this area, up to the end, it'll take about six hours and we can have one spar done. Well, Ron, thank you so much for telling me about your job. Well, thank you so much for coming and being interested in my job. Hey, CJ. Hey, Nikita. So, what do you do here at Boeing? So, my job title is Spar Assembly Operator. Essentially, what we do here is we take the product from Will's area and Ron's area, and then we put them all together. So, what am I looking at here? So what we're looking at here essentially is a sort of primitive stage in the process, but it is the final large part of the build where you put the top and the bottom together. There's still a lot of other little pieces that will go on it and it needs to be painted, stuff needs to go inside of it, things like that. But we are the final major part of the build. So how is Mechatronics used in this process? What we do here is the product will move into our area. We will level it with a laser to make sure that everything is perfectly in place before we start doing anything. And then my machine and another machine on the other side of the wing, so each side, the headstone will come out, it will go up, it'll drill a hole, and then it'll install faster. Then it'll go to the next hole, it's same thing, same thing, cross stitching all the way down the wing. So do you run the machine? Yes. So essentially what we do before we can start doing anything for the day is we have to make sure that the correct program is loaded into the machine so that it knows exactly what it needs to do. Then after we have that set up, we go to the headstone and we make sure that all of the right tools are in place, all the sealant is in the right place, things like that. Then what we do is we start and we run the program. But between each different hole size, for instance, we have to re-verify that the drill is good and the sealant is good and the fasteners are going to be good before we can do anything on the wing. But the program tells us exactly when we need to do those things. And so we basically just go start to finish with the program and run it all the way down. Do you consider your job fun? Oh yeah, every day. Every day I'm having fun. You would think coming in and doing this on a daily basis, it would just get boring. No, not the case. Always something new happening. Every day you never know what to expect. Every day you learn something new. It's pretty cool. Well, CJ, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nikita. Take care. 
Wow, that was such a cool tour! I hope you enjoyed it and have a better understanding of what Mechatronics is. Now, let's send you to Portland, Oregon to learn about the robotics technology Boeing uses there. Olivia, take it away! Thanks, Nikita! Hey everyone, I'm a senior in high school here in the Portland area. I'm a Girl Scout and I love spending time outdoors, camping, hiking, and mountain biking. I also love robotics and I'm a huge part of my school's robotics team. The facility here in Portland is nearly 90 acres in size and ranks as one of the largest complex machining facilities in the world, producing critical parts, assemblies, and structures for the Boeing 737, 747, 767, 777, and 787 airplane models. Boeing uses several robotic systems here to help manufacture these parts. Like Mechatronics, robots rely upon mechanical and electrical systems to carry out their tasks. They're similar, but not the same. Almost all robots are mechatronic systems. Mechatronics, on the other hand, can include robotics, but it can also include several other branches of engineering. Hi, Brian. Hi, Olivia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So what do you do here at Boeing? I'm a team leader sandblaster at Boeing of Portland, and I run some automated sandblast equipment. Nice. So what kind of parts do you sandblast on these robots? So these are all wing associated parts. We do primarily titanium and stainless steel. Can you tell me a little bit about this machine? Sure. This is our smaller of our two robotic machines. This is the load unload station. And then inside the machine is uh, the blast station. All that we sandblast in this machine is magnesium parts. So I'll go ahead and load up this part. Okay, so we've got the part loaded on the fixture. I'm gonna go ahead and select the part. And now the machine's gonna cycle. Okay, let's go around and look in the window and watch the robot blast the part. Wow, it's so fast. And then the robot will come around sandblast the sides of it, and then it'll also sandblast underneath. Oh, wow. So the part will be sandblasted complete without having to turn it. Wow, that's really cool. Can you tell us a little bit about the robots here? Sure. So in this case, we have two larger robots. They're suspended off the ceiling, and they both are attached to trolleys that travel east and west. Right now, we have 737 stainless steel flap tracks loaded up here. We're sandblasting them for the chemical process operation. On that end, we have two 737 titanium landing gear beams. We're sandblasting those parts to prep them for a primer that needs to be applied. Nice. All of the media that we're blasting with will be reclaimed back into the machine. Dusts and fines will be pulled out and good media will be put back into the blast pot and it's just a continuous cycle. Wow. So it won't stop in the middle to be reloaded with media or anything. It will just constantly be reclaimed and uh, reclassified and then put back into the blast vessel. Wow, that's really cool. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Olivia. So nice to meet you. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at Boeing? I am a research and development technician here at Boeing, so I actually get to build the automation and prototyping solutions for the site. So what got you interested in this career? I loved working with my hands. I loved being able to take apart things and put them back together. I always wanted to know how something works. I was really interested in figuring it out and then using it to build something else, something new. And then I was able to find an internship here at Boeing and it really opened my eyes to a world that I had no idea existed. Can you talk a little bit more about the problems that you're solving here? I like focusing a lot on safety problems, quality problems, things that make the operator's jobs easier. Show me the process that you're having the issues with. So, pretty much shaving these flush manually is what is the ergonomic challenge here. So you'll pretty much see kind of hunched over in an awkward position. The shorter people, they have problems worse than I do. You can see I'm tall. 
Whenever I hear about a problem that they're having any safety issues or ergo issues, it's really fun being able to have a positive impact on the work that they do to make sure that their life's a little bit easier and they enjoy coming to work. So once you create a solution to a problem, is it just like you're completely done or is there continual development? When I'm working on a problem, I really like including the operators from the beginning to the end. I want to make sure that I understand what their problem is and that I address it completely. Instead of just addressing bits and pieces of it, I want to make sure that they feel involved. And then towards the end, I really like doing testing with them and getting their feedback and then making those changes accordingly, just to make sure that they enjoy their system and they're going to use it. So can you please explain to me the process that this robot does and what exactly does it do for this part? This is a robotic installation tool for heating up a bushing to install it on an inner torque tube of a 787 flap system. Yes, it'll heat it up to 485 degrees. It expands the bushing and then it'll be able to slide and it locates it in a specific location. And what are the advantages of having this system automated versus having the manual process that was done before? This is consistent. It will always put that bushing right where we want it. There's no need for anyone to have their hands near 485 degrees. So what got you into the STEM world? So I've always been kind of traditionally good at STEM subjects in school, but I never had a real passion for them until I joined the robotics team my freshman year of high school. And once I got that hands-on experience, like watching the robot being built and helping to manufacture parts myself, I got super interested in like watching a product go from beginning to end and watching the robot like come to life right before my eyes. So now at school I've had more opportunities to use the power tools to build those kinds of things. And then I've also started getting more interested into like the physics and calculus behind how the robot moves and like how design decisions are made. Do you have any advice for other women who might want to enter the engineering field? I would say to definitely do what makes you happy and not care about whether or not you know you think you should do it or not do it. I would say that if it's something you enjoy, it's totally worth it regardless of what anyone else says. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, Rebecca. Yes, you're welcome. I hope you enjoyed the tour and learning how Boeing uses robots to manufacture airplane parts. Now, let's send you to Salt Lake City, Utah to learn about ergonomics. Chris, you're up. Thanks, Olivia. Hey, everyone. I'm a college freshman here in the Salt Lake City area with an interest in drafting and design technology. In high school, I was a member of Latino Scientists of Tomorrow, a program that helps 10th and 11th graders pursue their dreams of becoming scientists, business leaders, and engineers. I also work at my dad's business doing powder coat painting. It's a type of dry paint that is applied electrostatically and then cured under heat or with ultraviolet light. This is why I'm excited to tour Boeing Salt Lake City, where the horizontal stabilizers of the 787 Dreamliner get painted. To help their employees do this work more safely, Boeing has made several ergonomic improvements. Ergonomics is the study of people's safety and efficiency in the workplace. It uses devices, tools, and other technology to help fit a job to a worker. So let's go see some ergonomics in action. Hi Chelsea. Hey Chris. Can you tell me what you do here at Boeing? What's your role? I work to implement new technologies uh, and innovate new solutions for our production lines and for the people that work our production lines. What type of solutions have you come up with recently? What's something that you've been working on? We've implemented the exoskeleton technology throughout Boeing and here uh, at Boeing Salt Lake. And that is essentially a tool that you wear that helps you perform your, the operations that you need to do for your work. Exoskeleton, that sounds pretty cool. Can you explain what that is? So an exoskeleton is an externally worn skeleton or an external skeleton, kind of like what you see um, on a beetle or other types of bugs. How does the exoskeleton vest fit into the field of ergonomics? So ergonomics is the study of how the human body works mechanically, how do we work. So ergonomic solutions are solutions that help fit the job to the person as opposed to the person to the job. In this case, the exoskeleton is relieving the stress of the job by providing an external support. This is the exovest. Uh, what you're seeing here, these are actually, um, these two elements here are what we call springs. They're pneumatic, which means that they provide force through compressed gas. And this is kind of the skeleton portion of it. We can adjust the spine. This area here is meant to put the weight of the vest on your hips. 
And what's actually providing the support to the arms are the straps here, the combination of the straps. And then you can see as Jason moves, these uh, wings will move back and forth to allow him to have full range of motion with the vest. And do the employees here at Boeing have to wear the vest? Do they like wearing the vest? Here, they don't have to wear the vest. It's an option for them. Uh, if it's something that aids them in their work, then they'll wear it. If they feel like they don't need it for that operation, then they don't have to. Chelsea, thank you so much for explaining to me what you do here at Boeing. Absolutely, you're welcome. Hey, Jason. Hey, Chris. So this is the exoskeleton vest. Could you tell me what it feels like to wear it? It's, it's a little bulky. It, you can tell, definitely tell that it's on, but the benefits that I get from it far outweigh that. So what work do you do that actually requires you to use the vest that makes it beneficial for your work? So what we do is we sand the horizontal stabilizer. We do it with a six inch orbital. And a lot of the time you're up above your head sanding. So that's the benefit of it is it kicks in right about there and you can sand above your head and work above your head without fatiguing your arms. All right, and then why do you sand it? I mean, we know what the horizontal stabilizer is, but why do you need to sand it? So we sand the horizontal stabilizer to create a mechanical adhesion with the paint. And we get rid of all the debris on it, and we get rid of all the oils by cleaning it and sanding it, and then we get a, a good substrate to put our paint on. And then going into the painting process, once it's sanded, what do you do? Where do you take it? After we sand it, we move it to the paint booth, and we tack rag it off, then we'll put a coat of primer on it, and then we'll finish coat it with four coats of white. And when you're painting, do you wear the exoskeleton vest? We don't wear it while we're painting because the robots perform that. So aside from getting, I guess, a more even and better product, are there any other benefits to using the robots? Are they safer in any way? They are, they're safer. Uh, we don't have to have a human in that envelope, and that decreases your um, exposure to chemical. There you go. Then I just like, oh. How's that feel? That's interesting. Yeah? That's good, huh? I'm just leaving my arms hanging right now. Yeah? It'll pick your arms right up for you. Wow. I can tell by the smile on your face that you like that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, Jason, thank you so much for your time and showing us how the exoskeleton works and about the painting robots, I really appreciate it. No problem, Chris, thank you. Thank you. While I was here in Salt Lake City, I learned that Boeing also uses robots in a nearby manufacturing facility in West Jordan. Let's meet Jason Pontes to hear about his work with Boeing's five axis CNC robots. Here in West Jordan, we manufacture the automatic overwing exit door for the 737 MAX. The automatic overwing exit door is made using raw material aluminum stock. This stock roughly weighs around 550 pounds at the beginning of the machining process. At the end of the machining process, around 440 pounds gets removed from the material, resulting in the finished door. This process is subtractive manufacturing. What this means is we are removing material from a raw material stock. The way we machine the doors, we use a five axis machine with various toolings. We have counter bores, drills, and reamers. And these perform various sequences given the program from our CNC programmers. What it means to be five axis is the machine basically has five axes of movement that it can perform. It has an X, a Y, Z, a B plane that is the pallet, and an A that is at the spindle head of the machine. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. The machine runs off of commands from a program that the machine follows to perform various duties, calling out for tools such as the reamer, counterbore, and drills. So it is pretty amazing that we are creating these doors out of one solid piece of aluminum. Before, you had to have various different components. Now, using that one solid piece of material, there is less room for error during the construction of the door. We have five machines here and they are names of the Ghostbusters. A manager here loved the show as a child and decided to name all of them from the show. My manager even named the workstation Zool, which is the gatekeeper in the movie. My favorite thing about working here is that we are making airplanes. We are making components for them that make, essentially makes the airplane function. In the need of needing to use the automatic exit wing door, 
we are confident that it will work every time as intended. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling inspired by all of the ergonomics, robotics, and mechatronics we learned about today. We hope you've enjoyed this Boeing Future U virtual field trip, manufacturing the future of aviation. We want to say a huge thank you to all the employees we met in Renton, Washington, Portland, Oregon, and in Salt Lake City and West Jordan, Utah. Learn more about aerospace manufacturing at BoeingFutureU.com. On behalf of Discovery Education, bye-bye.